Hey, today we're gonna be reading Psalm chapter 40 and 41. So here it is, Psalm chapter 40. I waited patiently for the Lord to help me, and he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. Oh, the joys of those who trust the Lord, who have no confidence in the proud or in those who worship idols. O oh Lord, my God, you have performed many wonders for us. Your plans for us are too numerous to list. You have no equal. If I tried to recite all your wonderful deeds, I would never come to the end of them. You take no delight in sacrifices or offerings. Now that you have made me listen, I finally understand. You don't require burnt offerings or sin offerings. Then I said, look, I have come as is written about me in the scriptures. I take joy in doing your will, my God, for your instructions are written on my heart. I have told all your people about your justice. I have not been afraid to speak out as you, O Lord, well know. I have not kept the good news of your justice hidden in my heart. I have talked about your faithfulness and saving power. I have told everyone in the great assembly of your unfailing love and faithfulness. Lord, don't hold back your tender mercies from me. Let your unfailing love and faithfulness always protect me. For troubles surround me too many to count. My sins pile up so high I can't see my way out. They outnumber the hairs on my head. I have lost all courage. Please, Lord, rescue me. Come quickly, Lord, and help me. May those who try to destroy me be humiliated and put to shame. May those who take delight in my trouble be turned back in disgrace. Let them be horrified by their shame. For they said, Aha, we've got him now. But may all who search for you be filled with joy and gladness in you. May those who love your salvation repeatedly shout, The Lord is great. As for me, since I am poor and needy, let the Lord keep me in his thoughts. You are my helper and my savior. Oh my God, do not delay. Psalm 41. Oh, the joys of those who are kind to the poor. The Lord rescues them when they are in trouble. The Lord protects them and keeps them alive. He gives them prosperity in the land and rescues them from their enemies. The Lord nurses them when they are sick and restores them to health. Oh Lord, I prayed, have mercy on me. Heal me for I have sinned against you. But my enemies say nothing but evil about me. How soon will he die and be forgotten, they ask. They visit me as if they were my friends, but all the while they gather gossip, and when they leave, they spread it everywhere. All who hate me whisper about me, imagining the worst. He has some fatal disease, they say. He will never get out of that bed. Even my best friend, the one I trusted completely, the one who shared my food, has turned against me. Lord, have mercy on me. Make me well again so I can pay them back. I know you are pleased with me, for you have not let my enemies triumph over me. You have preserved my life because I am innocent. You have brought me into your presence forever. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who lives from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. One of the things uh, in Psalm 40, this is really interesting, especially for David. I was, I was reading a book called The Day of War, and uh, it's a historical fiction, and, and it's David's mighty men, and they're talking about David, and the, they ask one of them, like, what David? what is David really like? And he said, um, he said, I've never seen someone so violent who sings so much. <laughs> I thought that was such an awesome thing of David, this warrior who goes out to the battlefield and then just starts singing a song. And I think it's such a powerful thing because you have to remember one of the powerful things about praise is praise is an outward sign of an inward work. One of the reasons that is, is David says it right here, he says, um, he has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God, that many will see what he has done and be amazed. And it's interesting because another version says he put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to my God, that many would see and know. And, and it's funny because out of a song, how do you see out of a song? 
right? Unless the song is empowered to paint a picture that God wants us to see. And when David starts to declare something, it becomes a testimony and that testimony creates a picture and that picture becomes the future. And just like Revelation says, it says, now the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. That means the testimony of what God has done in your life can be somebody else's future. So sing that new song. And it's a new song because this is a new experience. This is a new thing. It might have old words. We might have old old words that are describing it, but it is a new song because it is a new experience of this God who has never ending experiences. And I want to encourage you when God does something in your life, sing a song to him, sing a praise to him, lift up your voice and declare. It doesn't even get in your car. You, I, I'm not really a singer. That's okay. I'm not a songwriter. That's okay. There's something that bubbles out that isn't trying to be any kind of form. It's just a thank you. It's just a declaration. The one who rescues me, the one who saves me, the one who redeems me deserves all of it. So I hope as you're reading through this, there's certain things that you're underlining, you're highlighting, that you're meditating on. Get this word in your heart. I believe it's going to empower your daily walk.